Hello there. Right, let's have a look at approved voltage testers and measurement categories. And we'll look at some of the issues you can have when using a voltage tester. The voltage tester is probably your most important piece of equipment because we use it to verify safe isolation. And we can use it to see if there's a dangerous voltage on any equipment we might be working on. There's good guidance from the Health and Safety Executive. It's known as Guidance Note GS38. I'll let you know about the law. What are the risks? What are the causes of accidents? the test equipment you should use, and safe systems of work. It's a good publication to read. I'll put a link to it in the description. So your voltage tester should be two pole because you're measuring between two points to get a proper voltage reading. It should give a voltage indication even if there's no battery in it. You should have finger barriers on the probe so your hands don't slip down. It's got to be suitable for the voltage in class that you're going to be testing. The lead should be robust, flexible, double insulated and the connection of the lead should be shrouded or firmly attached and the maximum amount of exposed tip should be two millimeters they say between two and four but two is the preferred amount there's plenty of devices that say they can test voltage such as a neon screwdriver i wouldn't use them they're unreliable and potentially dangerous a multimeter they're quite complicated machines to use it's possible to have the meter incorrectly set or the leads in the wrong terminals and the leads are often not double insulated and volt pens are unreliable for safe isolation because it only gives you an indication that voltage may be there. You do need a two-pole tester. You rub a volt pen on your jumper, it'll light up. They do have some uses, which I'll mention later on. The voltage tester is so important, but we need to verify that it actually does work every time we carry out safe isolation, before we test and after we finish testing. The preferred method to prove your voltage tester is to use a proving unit because it's safe and it's portable you can carry it around with you. It's got two connection points that you put your probes into and it'll simulate the voltage 230 volts or whatever. You can also use a known source. That can be a bit tricky because as electricians you call it somewhere because there's faults so the supply might be faulty. But one of the recognised known sources is the incoming side of your main switch. Obviously that's a live test there. This is something you only do under the direct instruction of somebody who's qualified and when the system has been locked off and isolated. When you are doing your safe isolation, you're testing that the circuits have been de-energized, but the voltage testers have to be capable of handling any voltage that could appear. You get different categories, CAT4, CAT3, CAT2 and CAT1. And the principle behind it is, and so if you imagine your house and you've got the transformer in the street, the further away you get from the transformer, the lower the category of tester that is required. The principle being the number of protective devices between what you're testing and the transformer. If there's one other current device from the transformer to where you're testing, such as your incoming supply, the meter and such, you'd need a category 4 tester. If there's two other current devices, it's category 3. So that could be such things as your socket circuits, fuse spurs, because you've got the MCB protecting you and you've also got the main fuse protecting you. And the further away you get, you'll have the fuse in the plug as well. So that might bring it down to category two. Generally though, any voltage testers you're going to be buying will be either category three or category four. In GS38, it tells us that the preferred length of the metal probe tip is two millimeters. Can go up to four, but two is the preferred length. The reason is so you don't get any arcing between the two probes and it is possible sometimes to take the plastic tip off the leads you get more exposed metal sometimes you need to do that if you're going into a very small connector but you'll notice on the leads that brings it down from a category 4 tester to a category 3 tester it'll be stamped on the actual probes with the cover on its category 4 with the cover off its category 3 the reason being it's more dangerous. Category 4 measurements, that's very dangerous. You need procedures in place to avoid shorting high energy circuits and creating arc flash. The categories blur into each other because you think in your fuse board I've got two protected devices from the transformer so that's category 3. If you think your main switch in the consumer unit there's only one protected device between you and that transformer so you would need a category 4 voltage tester. In category 1 that is for equipment that's not normally connected to the main supply. I'm just going to quickly go through a few possible issues when you're using your voltage tester. These socket adapters that you can plug into a socket so you can put your tester in. You often find that the probes won't work with these. You put your probes in and you're getting zero volts. That's because the probes aren't making a connection inside the adapter. Normally you can pull the tip off the lead and you actually put the lead into the adapter. I've got a little video of this in a bit. 
And another thing to bear in mind as well, if you have got a live connection on one end of your voltage tester, a voltage may appear on the other probe. So good care needs to be taken there. And when you're buying a voltage tester, I think it's best to have one that purely just measures voltage. Some have a dial that you can turn to current and continuity. And the issue with them is that you might have it on the wrong setting. Again, I've got a little video on this. Here you can see the voltage tester and the adapter being used incorrectly. Those probes are making contact inside. So it's possible that you get a false negative. You think you're isolated when you're not. As you can see when I plug this basic socket tester in, the circuit is energised. If you did want to test this socket, using the socket adapter is the best way to do so because you don't have to take the socket plate off the wall or the connection is shrouded. The correct way to do it is remove the tips from the voltage tester, if your tester allows you to do so, and you put the leads into the adapter and you've got a good safe, you've got a good safe connection. It's not possible to touch any live parts. Most multifunction testers come with a plug set. You do have to be careful with your leads. So for example, these are some leads of my Mega. And they'll only fit into this adapter one way. If you try and put the probe in that way, it's not making a connection. So you have to put that end into the adapter. And the shorter end actually goes into the Mega. So it's the opposite way around to what you would normally do it. Do check that your leads are making a good connection. And here we can see on this voltage indicator that having the wrong setting can give you misleading readings. I switch it to current and get 0.1. The little indicator light comes up there to say there's some kind of voltage present. But if you're unsure of your tester, that could cause you some confusion. And if you put it onto continuity, the proving unit doesn't seem to want to work and you just get OL. And you might get misleading readings especially when you're inexperienced. And you might be tempted to take the covers off the probes and expose more metal, so you can get into these socket adapters. But I wouldn't suggest you do that. I mean, you might get a reading. There you go, it's working, you're getting a connection. But again, you're never 100% sure how good that connection is. But the thing to remember is, if it is live, you'll notice there on the fluke tester, I'm testing the other end of that probe, and we've got a voltage on that. If you've got a live connection on one end of your voltage tester, the other end of that probe is going to become live as well, and you can get a shock. So it's best to use the proper connections, do it right. So the safe isolation isn't just a test procedure, it's everything that goes with it as well. You have your risk assessments where you work out the hazards and who's affected, controls that are needed, any actions and how you're going to review it. And you need good risk awareness, you need to know what voltage category you're working at. It's good to have a knowledge of shared neutrals. Where a circuit you think is isolated is not. It's energised by the neutral from another circuit. I've got a video on that. Got to consider the environment, height, arc flash. You have to be aware of what the potential risks are. And if you need any personal protective equipment, your basics, you have high vis, your safety shoes, eye protection, gloves. Up to specialist dark flash protection and insulating protective equipment. But we're not talking about work and life here. What we're talking about is confirming that the installation is isolated so we're not working live. You and your equipment needs to be aware that there are circumstances you could be connecting to something live and you always treat everything as live until you know it's definitely not. I mentioned earlier that the pen type detectors do have a use in certain circumstances and one of those circumstances is with diverted neutral currents where has this touch voltage can appear on the protective earthing system and anything connected to it, which is basically everything. So we're not going to go into diverted neutral currents here. It's something that we all need to read up on and get familiar with. But these voltage pens can just give you your first level of protection. Say if you're approaching something, you're approaching an MET or a distribution board, this pen can give you an indication that there might be an issue, there might be a voltage present. It's only an indication. And it's your first level. We do now have to start thinking about our first approach to electrical systems 
and making sure that there's no dangerous voltage present. And that's where these voltage pens can come in handy to give you that first indication if there is any issue. So thanks for watching. I hope it's some use to you. And keep safe.